Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. So today we are getting down to the nitty gritty, and we are thinking about degree or experience. Hmm. Which one do you need more versus the other? You know, this is a big debate. Let's be honest. It's talked about it. People have been thinking about it. So I have two lovely ladies, Nadian and Casey here, who is who have such great experience in the HR department that they know. You know, they know if degrees or experience, which one, which one. So ladies, thank you for coming on my show. I just have to ask you right off the top of just ripping off that band-aid. Which one do you think is more important, degree or experience? I mean, we'll say all day, any day, experience over degrees. Experience. Interesting. I love that because I've always held on to that. Like as long as I gain the experience, I know I can get the job, but I've had to come across those parts where it's like, no, a degree will be needed. And a lot of people who have degrees are fighting against people who have experience. I mean, what is your opinion on that? I mean, you worked in HR for over 10 years for the both of you. Oh, I mean, what do you what are your thoughts on that? I will all jump in and say I think the norm of needing a four-year degree, master's preferred, I think that's really starting to go out the window and has really flown out the window in the past five years, I would say. I mean, you have Fortune 500 companies like Google and Apple who no longer are requiring degrees. I I really think it's becoming a thing of the past, in my opinion. I think experience as well as who you are as a human and your key attributes, that's what's important. Drop mic drop. Yeah, yeah, my (laughs) mic drop. I got a highlighter. Can we use a highlighter right there? Highlighter drop. (laughs) Mechanical pencil drop. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, And, and I'll add, just, you know, from our experience working with employers and placing quite literally thousands of top candidates from all over in the nation, there are key attributes that we look for, that employers look for, that far outweigh the importance of a degree. Um, Mm -hmm. And those things really come down to, like, to Casey's point, like the human that you are, uh, but really, it's it's the level of emotional intelligence that the candidates that we interview have. And for me, I mean, that's that really comes down to like five things. And it's how they collaborate in a team environment, how they communicate with, you know, with, with the interviewer or with other people, um, critical thinking skills, dependability, adaptability, how adaptable they are in like fast paced or changing environments. And I would say those are the things that we really look for in our interview process versus just a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think those are important attributes too, because let's be honest, you can be book smarts, but you can be frozen in time once you're in the the face of the moment. Like, would you really want a surgeon that only knew the books, but never actually had the experience to do operation? No. Mitzi, that hit very home to me (laughs) because, um, you know, one of my past companies, I actually, you know, worked, uh, for a surgeon, um, who, I mean, it's exactly what you uh, just described, um, really, you know, wasn't, had the degrees and all the things, I believe, uh, but wasn't necessarily uh, the best operator. And so those things, and and it's because of emotional intelligence and those attributes that I, that I uh, mentioned before. So what you just said, I'm like, oh gosh, do you know my life? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I quite literally um, have been in that situation a- as their HR person. So, wow, yeah. that's interesting. I, yeah, because I want to. Oh, sorry. Ahead, I want to be please, clear that we're talking a lot about experience, experience, personality, attributes. That's not to knock on your bachelor's degree or your master. No. Those are that's extremely impressive. It's a you dedicate a lot of your life, a lot of work to get those degrees. So just want to put that out there. We're not knocking on your education. For sure. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that because we have to keep it real because I was just about to bring up how I met somebody who was working at Macy's and had a master's degree in liberal arts, but yet was working at Macy's. And I was like, why? And I was, and she, all she could say was I have no experience. 
So because I have no experience in the field, I have no way to get my foot in the door. Yeah. And it's crazy to me because I'm, I'm, I'm from a small town and I moved out, you know, I moved to Austin and Orlando and Atlanta. So I moved to the big cities and I've noticed that um, you can sometimes find a way to get experience in small towns and through staffing agencies in the field that you want that you don't even need experience to even get in in the door. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, what, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think we actually, this is something that we see quite often. We were just talking to, a, you know, an MBA candidate this past week about this, you know, he wants to be an HR, he potentially wants to be an HR consultant. And, you know, how, how do I get into that world with no experience with this fancy degree? Mm -hmm. um, we, we coach quite a bit on get an internship, even if it's a free internship, even if it's just two or three hours here and there in the field that you're interested in, get an internship through college. Um, you're you're going to learn a lot of wonderful skills about the workplace you're going to learn a lot of wonderful things about the industry that you're excited about um, or the field that you're excited about. And you're going to have like a real tangible resume when you go to apply. A a absolutely. And I'll add a, a great foot in the door as well as really working through your network. Like mm -hmm. I always say your network is your net worth. That is so true. Be like this intern um, potentially that, you know, Casey and I will be hiring, but the MBA student uh, that we're talking about you know, potentially offering him an internship with us. Um, he actually came through a referral, like a, someone that we knew, um, and it like within our circle. And it's just so interesting. Like most opportunities, like first foot in the door typically is because of who, you know, um, and that that's how competitive the market is now. And, uh, I, I just really want to emphasize how important like it's never too early or too soon to start building a network ever could not agree more that's such a great point yeah I appreciate you talking about internship and I appreciate you talking about networking because let's be honest that statement it's who you know is a really big statement and people yeah. forget the fact that you could put hard work in but you will never be recognized unless you actually put yourself out there to make the real connections you know what I mean? To make those real connections because you can be a janitor all day, every day, but you will never be the principal unless you start talking to everybody and figuring things out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you kind of have to put yourself out there in that internship to gain that experience, even if it's free. Woo, that's a heavy burden to bear, especially in this economy that to do free work. But people have to realize that free work right now is going to pay off in the long run because that experience is going to build with that with that degree. So, is it true that you pay that most companies will pay more if you have that degree behind the experience? I I I can speak to this personally. I have yet to see that. <laughs> I have yet to see um that someone with an Ivy League degree gets paid more than someone with a not non-degree or non-Ivy League degree, that that just doesn't happen. And in fact, more and more, we need to be careful about distinguishing, like if they're performing the same role, the same job title, it's more of a leveling and we need to treat people fairly. And based on like the scope of work, the responsibilities, the duties versus their background or, and where they came from. So, I mean, typically there is a range, right, for any role, uh, but more and more companies are becoming more cognizant of internal equity and ensuring that everything and everyone is paid fairly uh, just because of so many, you know, either it's a gender gap or either it's, you know, bias gap in pay and, so I, I'm actually, I have yet to see in my career almost 20 years into this where someone is more highly compensated because of their education. Um, now, I, I will caveat saying when we say education, I personally am not meaning like there are healthcare professionals and providers. You need 
oh, so you need your your license, right? <laughs> you need a licensure to, to practice, right? If you're an attorney, you need a license. If you're an accountant, you, you know, and it's a CPA. Like, so there are certain professions that like absolutely you it require the job requires you to have that certification, that licensure or whatever it is. Um, I'm more so talking about like the non-required licensure type of jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And honestly, to, to answer your question a different way too, I feel like we see it more Nadine's right. We, you know, we have the set ranges, we have the set pay bands. What's going to really get you to the top of a pay band is going to be your years of experience versus where you went to college or even if you went to college. That's good to know. That's really good to know because in when I don't, you know, when you're leaving high school, all they talk about is where you go to college matters. But yeah. in reality, it doesn't go, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the degree and you get the experience along with it. So I feel like if any like teenagers are listening and they're thinking about what school to go to, I think the most important thing is just as long as you go to school, right? And going back to, and it's making sure that you're being intentional about who you're networking. Like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, it's never too early to, to build that. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and going back to the internship too, seeking those opportunities because they're out there. There are so many companies that want, you know, raw talent, people that they can develop, people that are hungry. And and by the way, we're saying unpaid. There's a lot, most internships are paid. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah, that's true. That's true. So I'm curious, what does it really mean when somebody in HR tells you you're overqualified for the job? Is that a nice way of saying like, sorry, we really don't want you? <laughs> like rip off that bandaid. What does it mean? <laughs> Maybe some, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think that's what, I mean, a, a good recruiter in the right company isn't going to just spin, spin a story like that. But when someone tells you that you are overqualified, this company and, you know, these leaders, they have a job description that they have designed. They have a level of a role that they have designed. Um, let's talk about a specialist, a specialist role. If you come in and you're a manager or a senior manager or director, you probably are going to be a tad overqualified for the day-to-day -day responsibilities that have been outlined that this company really needs. Nadine, would you like to add, do you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, I, I, I think you, it's spot on Casey. I think it's oh. for a lot of companies, it's uh, the fear of like retaining that person are they going to get bored? Is the compensation not really in line with where they've been in the past? I, I, that That's a big fear of hiring someone that's overqualified. I like that. I like the way that you put it in that perspective, because let's be honest, people don't think about it like that. You know what sure. I mean? People don't take it, take it that into consideration. Like maybe they're putting me into, into play, into the perspective of the outline of what I would be doing and Maybe they know that I'm, I'm, I am meant for more and there is a better job qualified for what you can bring to the table. So yeah, that's, that is a great point to put out there because people do need to start thinking about it that in that way, instead of feeling upset that like, oh man, they just didn't want me. They're just right. making all these excuses. But in reality, it's like, no, there's, there's a, there's more to it than just that. And one of the things that yeah, also I'm curious because I've heard this a lot growing up is your name can determine if you even get looked at for a job interview. Do you think that's true? I mean, I, I mean, in my experience, we use the type of tools and have used the type of tools in the past <laughs> where it actually won't even tell you candidate information like that to remove biases. Um, I, I hope the wave of the future are those tools. So that is absolutely not true. Where that's the 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 standard, right? The requirement. Um, there are, to Casey's point, more and more we are seeing the sophisticated tools where they actually, yes, they remove gender, they remove name, they remove like oh. anything that would lead you to a bias. Um, in moving that candidate forward or not. So um, now do I think I, I won't be naive here and say it doesn't happen, 
I, mm -hmm. I'm sure it does. Um, but just from what Casey and I have experienced, I think she and I have both been fortunate enough to be part of organizations that have invested in these tools that really eliminate bias. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Cause I didn't know that. I didn't know you guys had a system that I'm just like, you know what, we're going to keep it vanilla for you guys. And this is what you only need to see. And if you like that person, so like swipe right. Right. <laughs> it's kind of fun as a, it's like a, kind of a fun game as a recruiter working in these tools. Cause you know, you'll source through like 50 resumes and you know, you'll move maybe, I don't know, five of them, you know, you'll swipe right, I guess on five of them. And it's kind of fun to get to those five and be like okay who are y'all now like who are you <laughs> right and then that's when you guys go more towards the emotional intelligence and everything else that you guys were speaking about before right you got it awesome mm -hmm. awesome I like that I like that very much this has been a really good conversation very interesting you guys really gave me a lot to think about going forward and sharing it to my to the younger generation that's coming after me, my nieces and nephews, when they go into the work field, you know, and they, they figure out that career goal and what they want, because, you know, hopefully technology just gets better. So it's easier to obtain a job, you know? So I'm curious, what do you guys have for some words of wisdom that you can leave my audience off to think of? You guys can do separate. It doesn't have to be a combination. You guys don't have to finish each other's sentences, <laughs> whatever you guys want. What would be some words of wisdom that you can leave my audience off? The first one that comes to mind for me is something that I never did is high school and college. They're constantly throwing job fairs and connect, you know, different employers are coming into the college classroom. You know, different employers are at high schools, connect with them, network with them. You know, you absolutely never know where it will lead. Go to, go to the job fair. <laughs> yeah. And I think for me, a a I think when I look back at my own like personal career and I just attribute a lot of my success to, um, you know, emotional intelligence and people skills. And so like never underestimating the value that that brings to organizations. Um, and so really honing in like just for the high school students or college students, like just as much focus as they're putting towards academics, I, I would say put that much effort, if not even more, right, on the emotional intelligence aspect that we were talking about earlier, because those are the things that at the end of the day will really set you apart. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add, Casey? No, I think good. I'm good. I think I'm good. That's good. I really liked it, this conversation. You guys really did bring some great points for us to keep on thinking. And I really like that last bit, you know, go on job fairs, just work on that emotional intelligence. You know, these are the key things that we all really need to start thinking about. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to know more about Nadine and Casey and have their website, just bloop, just click on it. They have their lovely photos right there. So you can find out more about what they have to offer and share to the world. So always keep thinking y'all. Bye.